Hey people, this is Andrew with another knife review for me here on Dose of Drew and today we are going to be going over the Kershaw Turismo. Pretty good little knife that uh, is both surprising and not. Uh, quick things first, this is a speed safe assisted knife on bearings with a stainless steel body. Um, a little bit of, of a fuller there with a little bit of hole. The teeny tiniest little flipper tab, which actually with the speed safe works pretty darn good. Action on this is nice, but first let us get to some size comparisons here. For a little bit of size, we've got the Kershaw Blur in the family here. As you can see, it is somewhat smaller than that. Another one from the Kershaw family here. We will go with the Kershaw Dividend. Ooh, yeah, with this one's in the special sawtooth. As you can see, Similar blade, but smaller handle. Similar cutting edge, but smaller handle. Oh, we'll go one more here in the Kershaw for the moment. That gets you a little bit closer. We'll come back to it, but uh, just give you an idea. Here is the Kershaw Leak. Even smaller than the Leak with very close to the same edge bits there. Uh, I'll come back to the Kershaws one more time. We'll get another one here. We have got the... Uh, Ritter Hogue Mini RSK here for those of you who can see the size comparison Really close in size different blade, but very very similar in a lot of other ways like I said it is Very very similar, but of course Does not have the access lock. Oh another classic one for size here the rat model 2 as you can see similar blade length, but much shorter handle um, and of course the assisted opening as well. Ooh, we'll do another one. The QSP Penguin. Again, similar blade, smaller handle with some curves. You'll notice that's kind of coming along here. Um, it's going to apply to a couple others. I'll get another one here. The, the Feldspar here, right? CJRB Feldspar. Again. You're gonna see a theme, similar blade, shorter handle, though not much on this case. Uh, another one, if you're not familiar with it, Kershaw Tumbler, Sinkovich design, kind of dwarfs this one in both blade cutting length and handle. One of my favorite knives, so it goes in the size comparison. Another one you might be familiar with here, the Spyderco Para 3. Again, similar blade. Para 3 has a much longer handle. Uh, the Turismo is smaller overall with a smaller handle. One more, since I'm not doing the two at a time thing, so I'll go with this one here. We've got the Medium Warren Cleaver in D2. Again, similar blade, longer handle. Uh, if you're not getting anything from this little bit of it, you get a lot of blade for the size of the knife. Um, it's really hard to overstate how much you get. Um, but there is an easy way to kind of see it. And this might be a little bit weird, but it is one of the last size comparisons I'm going to do here. And that is with its stable mate, the Kershaw Natrix Small. If you look real close, you'll see these are extraordinarily similar in size. And in fact, if you see if I can do this here, if you put them up, you'll notice their blades are their blade shape, their cur their blade curvature is almost exactly the same. So you get a lot with this full flat grind. Much longer, what I like to call the worn foot shape. It is not flat like a true worn cliff. Let me see if I've got a good worn cliff. Oh, I do. True worn cliff, right? Flat, straight, long, pointy tip. Worn foot, pointier tip, a little bit of belly. That's my thing. There's also a sheep's cliff, which is a snub of your nose with a little bit of belly. That's the sheep's cliff. I consider this a worn foot. Does anyone care? I don't know. Anyway, so this little uh, worn foot shape goes really, really nice. You get a lot of blade. You get easily grip. That high flat ground means it's nice and shallow compared to the Natrix, which is not a full flat grind. It comes up right to about the fuller. 
so you get an easier cutting experience. This one has a personal edge on it. It is the Copper Natrix in D2. This is, if you cannot tell, an in-house design. That little mark, I have it upside down, so, so you can see. If I do it this way, it might feel better. It is a Kershaw design. That is an in-house design. D2 steel. Now, here's the thing. Speed Safe normally, in fact, as I have shown a couple, does not have any drop shuddiness to it. With it's When it's on washers. Now, this one, on the other hand, has some drop shuddiness to it, believe it or not. That, uh, strangely enough, it is incredibly good on the action. I don't want to understate or overstate that. It is easy to use. It's easy to close. The little push button light switch is there. Half stop is nice with that kind of smooth KVT ball bearing action. Those bearings are tiny. I, let's see if we can even get that in there. I don't know if you can see Just how tiny those bearings are. It's probably not coming through on the camera. It's a tiny little set of cage bearings. They work great, however. The stainless steel frame lock is nice. Uh, it is easy to do. Even though this little flipper tab is nice and you can completely keep your fingers off and on there and flip it, it's good. Um, I find myself doing it with the thumb or more often than not doing the straight spidey flick. The middle finger, freeway flick, whatever you want to call it. There's a couple other fine points on this, but one thing I want to get across here is the ergonomics seem a little bit off because of the small size, but more importantly is that. That pocket clip that is almost useless. Has a nice, nice lip to catch so you can get it into a, even a pair of shorts fairly nice. But then it's narrow. It doesn't have a secondary bend to give you more room. It doesn't, it's not set down. It's not inset. And the screws aren't uh, flush. So not only do you have no room for a seam or a pocket hem, but there's no room for it to ramp over those. A really thin or light fabric. Like whoever's wearing this must be, they're, they're intending it for stretch pants. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to work. It is the... Normally a pocket clip is not a not a deal breaker, but this one's almost useless and this one I would say no. It, it, it's when you have things like this in your uh, stable and you put that on there. Why? So that's that. Now we'll get to one of the more beautiful things. Um, I'm going to do just a little quick down on my design aesthetics, uh, mechanics, and then the nice part of my review. So I'm going to do this real quick. The design, I really like it. It's unique. It's different. It's curvy. It's got this relatively small handle with a big blade, which is nice. It's got a lot of curves just like your hand. So I do like that. The aesthetics could be a little bit off, but when it gets down to it, it is basically a three-finger knife. You, I can get all four behind that little that little flat spot there i can get off for it but my pinky is holding that ramp right there so it's kind of providing a little tail bump i can hold it up like hey i'm lifting it and i can do it like this i get really good thumb action i can really pull it. so the design on it is okay i'm going to come back to those grips in a little bit because i wanted to do that so the aesthetics Relatively small, it carries nice, it's easy to fit in a pocket. It's not the lightest thing in the world. A um, couple of spectral quick, 2.9 inch blade. Um, let me see here, 6.7 inch, six and three quarters inches overall. So 2.9, just under three from that point, all the way from that point, all the way out to the tip. So you do come under the three inch mark. It is overall less than seven inches, so as we had noticed before, somewhat less than this leak by about a quarter inch, which is nice. It is no lightweight, but it is no heavyweight. It is 3.3 ounces, so it is a little bit more than what you would normally consider lightweight. 
I consider things under two and a half ounces to be lightweight, but two and a half to three ounces is also acceptable. Um, three to three and a half ounces is about standard, and you start getting over four to five ounces, and I consider that to be heavy. Uh, I own a Kershaw link, link as well as several others that are over that four ounce mark. That's about as heavy as I like a knife to be. Um, I don't really care about the size. I'm not looking for an ounce per inch because honestly, I can't carry a four inch blade here in California. So that being said, uh, this is nice. This EDC shape, this EDC capability. Um, wow. Uh, it, it is... Well, it's, it's good. It's relatively cheap. I mean, we're talking about something that is somewhere in the realm of less than $50. Stainless steel, D2, frame lock, with bearings, under $50. You can find these things on special for under $50. Are they flying off the shelves? I don't know. They don't seem to, but they should. This is a good knife. Again, that sucks. But... I have a silver one of these clips that I can probably drop on there if I have to. Probably order one, but the fact that I have to order one of their stock pocket clips instead of them putting that on there is really what could have made this knife great. That being said, there's a couple of things I really like about it. I've already mentioned this. I ex didn't expect this knife to do that. It's an intended to be an EDC knife. It is even though it's got good solid stainless steel D2, this is not meant to be a hard use knife. The frame lock has got some curves, so you got some place to put there. You can get a grip like this and do some heavy duty work if you need to. But, one, it's, the quick natural pinch grip on this thing is hard to avoid, but I wanna get one, you choke up and you can get much like you've heard on some of this, you can get your finger almost all the way out to it. You need to do some tip cutting. You need something where you're scoring. This thing will let you do it. And not only that, you got direct, that tip is in there, you got the blade, so you got some angle that, that, that gives you a flatness that keeps your fingers out to get the most out of the tip. You raise it up just a little bit and your fingers are glued off. This is great for little scoring bits, cutting open boxes, you can go this way. And then there's the choke up. Yes, there's not a lot that you're like, oh, that's, that's great. This is not how it was meant to be held. You can choke up like this and get, you can even do, you know, get your middle thing on there, finger the blade and get your finger right out to the tip. You need to pick a sliver or something like that. You can get a tremendous amount of control that way. But I don't know if you, that little divot there and the big divot there line themselves up for something. Well, that your thumb rolls into that long divot to put some nice place for your thumb and that gives you either a place for your finger to rest pretty quickly or your finger knuckle or the meat of your hand to find a little resting place. You can grip this hand, this over it, you put it in your hand, you got a good solid grip one, no twist. There's no, that thing isn't twisting out of your fingers. You, you, if you hold onto it, that is going to stay in line with your fingers stays in line with your hand with that knuckle right over the blade, power knuckle right there, right into the hand, right through the crevice of power. <laughs> Sounds like something a woman would have. Um, terrible for me to say that. And good action. Uh, that pinch grip is really good for most EDC. If, if you, 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 can, you can come up, you can, if you need open boxes, do it. You need to open an envelope, flipping this over and putting your finger right there makes this a fantastic letter opener. It does the trick quite nicely while keeping that easily controlled. Being able to do this at an angle that's not too high or not too low, that you can just get in there and then open an envelope, get at the top of a box instead of draw cutting or pull cutting it towards you, get that, get that underneath and just slide it open. It's got a great amount of EDC use from tip control, lock, nice continuous belly for long cuts for breaking down boxes. This is a box destroyer. That little bit of fuller gives it just a little bit of breakaway before it hits the top edge. Fairly thin blade stock. I really want to uh, accentuate just how thin this blade stock really is. Pair of three, not known for it. It's got that nice distal taper, but that's got quite the 
Vic Blaze stock comparatively. One that I think comes close is going to be uh, Kershaw Week, which if you can see, it's just a tiny bit thinner. Um, once again, it's, it's hard to really put in there. It's fairly thin blade stock, uh, especially comparatively. It's not quite at the 0.125. Uh, here's one that's probably more. That's also a good size comparison. So VV Ortis. You look at those blade stocks, fairly similar. Also, quick size comparison for those of you who like that. Um, uh, another quick Civivi that would be right in line for it. One last little bit here, the Civivi Elementum. More blade, or at least similar blade in the smaller handle. Smaller in the pocket, not lighter in the pocket. Full flat grind. Easy EDC. Um, Great ergonomics. If you expect this to be a hard use knife, you're going to go around chopping, you're going to be disappointed. But if you don't, if you expect this to be an EDC knife, you just need to pull out and do some things with maybe once a day if you're lucky. Um, other than opening envelopes, being a letter opener, if you have a dedicated thing, dedicated letter opener, and you use your knives as tools, this will be this will keep you happy long time. The D2 will hold an edge. For a pretty decent long time, it's fairly tough. They do usually do a pretty good job of heat treating it, so it does get some good edge retention. The action on this, safe to a certain point. Yes, you could you could hypothetically drop that on your finger, but you probably won't. And it always stops, and you have to push it there. So it is a, it is a one hand open, but it is also now a one hand close. Very easy to manipulate with one hand while you're holding something, so it gives you even more utility throughout the day. That being said, uh, we'll go over this one real quick. Stainless steel body, under three inch blade. Decent enough, no insert there, but it is hardened stainless steel, so it should wear pretty good. It does have a nice ball detent. It's got good, let me see, good ceramic bearings in there. Um, decent enough front spot for you to choke up really shines in the pinch grip style but you can also thumb grip it which it works just fine your pinky is going for me i wear a size large glove um, but my thumb and my pinky don't fill out the fingers while these three do don't ask me they don't make gloves in my hand size <clears throat> But it does, I do wear large size gloves across the palm and on the three middle fingers in here, but neither of these two fingers fill out the pinky or the thumb usually. It's, there's that much rubber sticking out on both of us. I don't know why these fingers are so short in gloves or why they make gloves with fingers that are so freakishly long on the two end ones. But this, these don't fit. So if you're wondering what that is, my palm and finger width, my girth of my hand, is a large, my fingers are not always necessarily as long as a large. That being said, I can have, as you can see, I can get my fingers right up close to that and have enough sticking out the back to go, but to get really comfy and behind that sort of built-in guard, my pinky supports that on the bottom. And then my thumb goes right on the jimping, just like it's supposed to. So it does work, shines in this, absolutely shines in this and it can do this. Just like you can choke up on it, you can do this. This grip is what it works for. And quite honestly, if you're looking for something that's got a little bit more classic lines, this is almost the exact same size as the existing Kershaw Natrix flipper. Almost the exact same blade cutting profile, but a taller blade, same steel, better, arguably better opening, though this fuller is, this is not a Natrix video, but this fuller is just as capable. Oops. If I'm not looking, <laughs> harder to do this on camera, as everyone says. But, well, it does flip, if you'll just trust me on this. But if I can get my fingers back on it. I haven't done it in a while, and now like, I do it on camera. I can't do it. There we go. It, does, it doesn't do it as easy. It's not as easy to do. It's a smoother fuller. It helps with the pinch grip. It helps with doing it out. But this thing is harder to slow roll it. But here's the thing. You can you can even, oops, <laughs> first one on camera, you can even actually pinch that open and slow roll it. You can slow roll a speed safe, watch. It's actually pretty easy. This one's not super high sprung, <laughs> um, but it does hit pretty nice. It hits pretty hard. Um, 
Got that nice little tiny flipper tab. Good ergonomics, relatively slim across there. That does give you a little bit on the back for a good little, you know, a little bit of width on the back for your fingers, but the pinch grip is where this really shines for me. Um, and I think that that little divot that the heads, that the pivot screw sinks into, as well as that cutout, really, really accentuates. It's there for the pinch grip. For me, that's an EDC master. It is how I hold most of my knives. I look for it. I look for the ability to do that. Um, currently, my favorite. Sorry for everyone who hates that. Oh my God, the Pilar 3. <laughs> this is beautiful for that. Um, this is really close. This is absolutely wonderful. My hand naturally just goes right in there. My thumb finds that, my finger finds that divot in either my knuckle or my, the meat of my, of my second knuckle falls right into it. It's great. Um, all that being said, this is a very good knife, especially for the price. The one place, and I can't imagine it being any more of a cost since it's essentially a stock clip, is that pocket clip. They have several better ones. My gosh. Even this one, look, that second bend on the dividend, like that would have been, it is the same length pretty much. It would have been just fine. Why did they need to do new clip? I don't know. The other ones are better. The, the small one, better. The large one, like on the dividend, almost the exact same length, better. Get, even though they don't countersink those, they at least give you a secondary bend so there's room for your pocket to go in there. Um... Worst thing about the knife. Some people won't like the smooth stainless steel. I have found it to be perfectly grippy. It is not something that is going to hold up well in wet or slimy conditions, but that isn't what this knife is for. Yeah, it's stainless steel and you got brass stuff and you got D2, which is stain resistant <coughs> at best. So you got not quite stainless, but most of the hardware is fairly stain resistant. This is not a hard use. Take it out in the rain and salt water and use a knife. This is an EDC knife for general cutting purposes. You can use it in the kitchen if you need to do a little bit of that real quick. You can use it to cut an apple. You can use it to open a box. You can use it to cut. You can use it for all sorts of EDC tasks. I use it to pick a sliver. I use it to get through. I shave my arm with it just to test the sharpness because it, it shaves out of the box. It's a good, it's a good edge. Um, it's about a 600 grit edge. It's apexed. I don't know if I'll be able to get that. Pretty even for Kershaw. They didn't. The, the one nice thing about this flat grain, if you don't notice it, they can't miss that. One thing I've noticed about a lot of Kershaws is they tend to miss the plunge grind, and you get that little bit of smile with a tiny bit of recurve. Not even a little bit here. They can't even. Not the way that they have that plunge line done, or the way that it works just isn't there great little knife edc edc bonanza in this little thing i do not usually like assisted knives i only like a few and most of them actually all of the ones that i own are kershaw i don't own an automatic all of them are speed safe it is basically the i mean you've seen pretty much all of them except for my link which isn't out here right now um that are speed safe assisted are they nice yeah is it great? I like them. I have, I, have, I have a few of them. They're not too bad. I don't like that I have to close them always. Like I, from the, as soon as I pull the liner lock, I have to start moving it while my finger's in the way. This, it's a whole other thing. I put my thumb there. I know it's not going to hit my thumb. There's a spring there. So it's, it's relatively safe for an assistant compared to the other speed safes. I know that this isn't going to hit my finger, whereas I might be able to close it on my finger in the other way. That's a good benefit. Stainless steel anodization is a little bit smooth, but it looks classy. The black and silver is really hard to say it's not great. The tiny little flipper tab is excellent. The action is fantastic. The blade design is great. Um, for less than $50 in a lot of places, this is an outstanding knife. This is on par with many, many, many other designs. 
but when you're going to be trying to do this, here's, here's the thing to show. When you're going to be trying to hit this price point, why did you make a new clip? You could have taken something off the shelf you had from other parts, produced a few more of them, and dropped it on this clip. The dividend would have been the same length. I've even put that little clip on there, and it still hits the uh, frame lock line. So there's several different options you could have done, both the angle, length, and type, where it wouldn't have been such a bad. The little clip's a little bit because of that cutout, so it's a little bit shady, but even the longer one on the dividend. On a price point on this, when you've got, for essentially similar money, you've got that, right? You've got that. I mean, I, I could go on. You've got that. Every single other iteration in or near this price point just about this of any worth or value of mentioning has a better pocket clip if i'm going to be spending this money on it and i'm going with kershaw or something like that why can't i get a good pocket it's deep carry but you can't get a hem in there it can't actually carry in your pocket unless you're wearing stretch pants or something that's the worst thing about the knife I, and i hate to really really hamper on there's a lot of people who won't like the looks they won't like the ergos they won't like the curves or they want a bigger handle they want a big heavy duty knife even if they're not going to use it like that i don't i think this is a great knife if i were giving it stars i'd say you give it four out of five could have been a little bit more expensive d2 is great 14 c28 would have n would have been great could have been just a few things on on there um, but really that pocket clip is what cinches it for me. That's what takes an entire star off. If this thing could have had the other pocket clip, this is a great freaking knife. Um, it is a great little tool. It, it, it's hard to explain. I think it looks nice. I like the minimalist look where you've got this relatively thin and then a relatively fat knife, fat blade for it where you've got that high flat grind. You know it's gonna slice, you know it's gonna cut. It's got a tip that while robust is still one you can control, you know, where it's got that classic worn cliff, sheep's foot, or in this case, as I like to say, the worn foot. That's a little more worn cliff than sheep's foot. Um, absolutely great little knife. Jimping where you need it, not too sharp, just enough to give you traction. Um, Kershaw has been in this game and price point for a long time, so it's hard to say anything. It is not ambidextrous at all. It does have a reversible pocket clip, but the only thing ambidextrous about it is the pocket clip and the fuller as well as the uh, flipper tab. So yeah, there's that. Frame lock isn't going to be left-handed anytime soon. Uh, with all that being said, you guys, I'm going to end this up at almost 30 minutes. I should have ended it a while ago, but I, I wanted to really hit on this. Great little knife, great little frame lock, good blade. That blade is really the shining star. I like the ergonomics. I didn't expect this to be anything but an EDC knife, but with that expectation, this knife excels. That being said, this has been a dose of Drew. This has been the Kershaw Turismo, a good knife with a bad pocket clip that is well worth the money. Um, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit that uh, notification button, and hey, this has been your dose of Drew. Watch it twice and come back in the morning. Thanks.